Fuso starting grid and we're going to see a Red Bull Holden alongside a Pepsi Max Ford Falcon. It's Wind Cup versus Winterbottom as we've seen many times before on the front row of the grid. Row number two, we've got Fabian Coulthard alongside James Courtney. We just spoke to James. He's looking forward to the run. Row number three, position five and six, Will Davis and Alex Premer continues this strong run this weekend. Yesterday's race six winner, Scott McLaughlin and the fast Kiwi Shane Van Gisbergen. And it's an all Kiwi row four. Row 5, 9 and 10, Craig Lowndes and Alex Davison, followed by David Reynolds and Jason Brighton. Jason currently leading the points table for the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. Yeah, which is handed out to the driver with the most combined points at the end of the four races. And remember that Brighty will start our next race from pole position. So we work our way through the mid-pack. Team Techno, Daryl Lee, Jonathan Webb. Just hasn't got a handle on that car this weekend. Russell Ingle there has had his dramas along the way as well, but he's always fighting Todd Kelly in the Nissan Ultima next to him. Team High Flex has a lot of Kiwis in the garage and a lot of support. Tim Blanchard will be in position 22. There is Holdsworth and Slade, both out of Erebus Motorsport. And David Wall for Wilson Security Racing. We'll have Mara Engel alongside him. And the fourth Kiwi on the grid is Johnny Reed. We'll bring up the rear from 27. So three out of the four locals are inside the top 10. Coulthard in third, McLaughlin in seventh, and Van Gisbergen in eighth. And there's the rat. It's always great to see him. Anytime, he's anywhere, he's a, he's a great bloke. <laughs> he misses you, Mark. He was a very, very good driver and one of New Zealand's best ever. Great to see he and Patricia and obviously young Amelia there singing the national anthems. Former World Touring Car Champion. He was very, very competitive in his day, wasn't he? Very much so. He would have run you off the road once or twice. He probably had the odd headbutt, but he's a great guy, <laughs> great competitor. He's had a great deal of success, and we don't see him in the paddock as often as we'd like now. Here's Jamie Wincup. We're on board with him. Great run for him in qualifying. Quite a few drivers having personal bests as their qualifying performances for this race number eight. James Courtney was one of them. Equaled his best of the year. James Moffat, best run for him. Also, Alex Premer had equaled his best performance. Remember, we've touched on the leader's curse this weekend. Pole position hasn't been too kind to those who have gained it. Both Jamie Wincup and Mark Winterbottom suffered in race six from the front row of the grid. And I can't wait for this start because Wincup and Winterbottom yesterday was one of the closest front row starts I've ever seen. They were both Last perfect to the, to the first corner. And Winterbottom's all fired up. He had a drama yesterday, he's had a drama in qualifying today, his blood's green high, green we'll see what happens. Well, he left Tasmania full of boiling blood as well. As battle resumes at the front, Sunday race day at Pukekohe, win cup and winner bottom. As always, there's next to nothing between them. It's going to be an interesting run down to turn one and Frosty gets aggressive early. That was a sensational start. His jump was very good. The secondary part of his start was good. Courtney in third. It's the exit of turn four on this long back straight. Single file down to turn oh, he's five. Got him. He's going to have to go straight ahead unless he can hold on. Good That's good where driving. A ride for him yesterday at the end of the race and almost again turn five claim Mark Winterbottom but he held on to it. James like Courtney almost ran up the rear of Wing Cup then as well. I was about to speculate. I wonder whether James got into Jamie or whether Jamie did it on his own. Be interesting to see that one as it unfolds. But that was right on the cusp of being a very big moment for Winterbottom because he could have turned in front of the field. That would have created absolute chaos. Up over the rise. And Tony D'Alberto, deep into the grass. So somehow Winterbottom held on, same two for Wing Cup and Courtney. So they drove into his the front. That was wild stuff into turn five. All the wheels locked. And here we go, back to the same zone again. Coulthard's putting a lot of pressure on James Courtney. Van Giersbergen on Davison. So this is not over into here. Safety car's going to be deployed here. So the Chrysler and Peters STP safety car will intervene, grab the field. Nobody can pass when those yellow flags come out. Here's the replay of the start. Initially good jump 
for Wincup, but then it went nowhere and slowly but surely Frosty started to edge across. At this point it wasn't clear, but in the secondary part of the start in second and third gear, he had just enough of the car up there and right there he put a little squeeze on and it worked. You are right on board. That's Jamie Winkup with Mark Winterbottom. A good start for Shane Van Gisbergen. He's made up two spots. So with the safety car now patrolling, we'll take a break. So some front end dramas for Tony D'Alberto and the team High Flex Commodore. I can't tell where he's parked. Uh, so that's all the debris off the back of the car. Can't work out where that location is. I think it's just off the edge of the pit entry. Yep. Yeah. So that's just in the first part of the pit entry road. I don't, think it's the, uh, I don't think it was the car positioning that tri uh, triggered the flags. I think it was the debris on the racetrack that they would have been concerned about in here at Race Control, which is right above our commentary point. Okay, so take a look at the yellow car there of Shane Van Gisbergen. He benefited from a relatively poor start by both Scott McLaughlin and Alex Premer. There they are. And so the gears went from eighth behind the two Fujitsu cars up to sixth. It's interesting in that start replay that we had. It was very, very even and eventually Wincup just had to relax the throttle a little bit and allow for Winterbottom to, to take his position. Otherwise, that would have ended in contact down there at one. Which is the flip side to what happened in race six. Winterbottom had a look on the outside and then thought, I'm not going to make it here. So he pulled back that time. The shot that we had of turn eight up there at the moment really gives you a graphic idea of how much camber there is on the road. It's quite a bold turn, eh? Well, the faithful have come out in force here to Pukekohe. Just love it, such wonderful vantage points all the way around the circuit. Up there where we were is uh, one of the great spectacles in motorsport. And this was a really scary moment on the first lap. Yeah, James, I don't think no, was in the back of Jamie at all then. No, it was basically Jamie. wind cup. Yep, Jamie by himself. And this is the Dalberto incident with Slade. And on the right hand side, one of the DJR cars. Oh, and he can't get off. So actually, whoever was in the DJR car there, well, he. He had nowhere to go. No. Tony was trying to get off the road, but he didn't realise there was another car there. And Tony steering at that point, we should point out, it would already have been damaged. It's gone, yeah. So it was already on the fritz by the time he came out of turn eight. So that was uh, Tony D'Alberto when we left you parked on the entry to pit lane, if you like, just to the right. The reason why the safety car was deployed is um, the debris ripped off the back of that car parked right in the middle of the circuit. They've now got rid of that. Here we go, Wink Cup on board and bang! Oh, <laughs> there's a little return of serve from yesterday. <laughs> I love that stuff. <laughs> it's a good catch by Frosty. By, by, by both. He had the wheels locked and, and, and Frosty caught it really nicely. So uh, that's two blokes at the highest level of the game. Bit of gamesmanship early. Doesn't get any better than that. I like how Wincup didn't move the car because if he moved the car, he would have dived alongside. So he just thought, I'd just give it a bump. We said in the media conference last night, I owe him two. So that was Jamie Wincup on Mark Winterbottom. That might be, well, one, if not one, it might be half. <laughs> so still one and a half to go. So Tony heads back to pit lane. It's disappointing for Team Highflex. There's his dad, Al. Had some power steering gremlins early in the weekend. We spoke to him yesterday in the show. So he was in the traffic jam at turn eight. So there'll be another lap under this safety car. Debris off the racetrack, and I didn't think the car was in an awkward spot, but the race director must feel that it is at the moment, so there's going to be this extra lap. 
So let's just think of the mind games going on here. Winterbottom knew that when you're going to try and get around Wing Cup, you have to do it as early as you can. He did that, so it was the first box ticked, and then he was all of a sudden being rattled galore down at turn five. And here's a guy I know won't be very happy, mate. We just saw that bit of vision there, a bit of contact at the back there. Yeah, just Constantina into the hairpin there. I mean, first lap of the race, everyone's got to, you know, take it a bit easy. And I just got hit from side to side and then had no steering at all and ended up putting in the fence there. But, you know, guys are just going crazy. Do you think it's the format? I don't think so. I think everyone's, you know, had yesterday to uh, warm into the races and now they're going, they're trying to make up positions on that first lap because it is hard to pass. But, um, you know, if you don't make it past that first lap, then you can't do any more, any more passing. So uh, really disappointing, pretty stupid, actually. OK, mate, good luck this afternoon. Well done, Larko. We'll grab a, another quick break, bring you back for the restart. So this should be just about ready for all systems go. On board with Scotty McLaughlin. So he's in seventh. We always say it on pretty much every circuit we go to, but especially here, how important qualifying is. And that is the reason why the Chrysler Pettis safety car is still out there. They've only just managed to remove car number three from the grass to the right-hand side of pit lane entry. And that... Uh, Incident involving Tony D'Alberto, Lee Holdsworth and Tim Blanchard is under investigation. So they've lifted the speed of the safety car so that all the cars can reduce some engine temperature. They were back at 60 k's, they're up to 120 k's now. And they're organising themselves for a restart at the end of this lap. Everyone doing their very best because with only a very short period of the first part of racing, tyre temperatures wouldn't have come up, so they'd still be very low tyre temperatures to commence the start of this after five laps. be some gamesmanship here. <laughs> the wing cup is going to watch him like a hawk. Perfect time to come back. The safety car has been cleared. Mark Winterbottom has control of the field. He'll be playing as many games as he can to get away from Jamie Winkup on this restart. And already it looks as though he's dropped him considerably. So a fantastic restart from the Ford Performance Racing Pepsi Max pilot of Mark Winterbottom. Single file. We always say that safety cars can breed safety cars. Restart fever surface yesterday. Let's see how they control this one. All the Mercedes and the Nissan side by side through turn one. It's Todd Kelly. That's Tim Slade tucked in behind him. Could have ended a whole lot worse. Murrow Engel just gets a little push alongside by Johnny Reed. And Coulthard is attacking the back of Courtney again as it was right at the start of the race. They're up in turn five now. He'll be looking to try and dive down the inside here at the hairpin. Didn't take long, by the way, for Winter Cup, uh, Wing Cup to claw back. He got the margin back, didn't Straight he? Straight away. So Tander up three positions, Van Gisbergen up two positions. That's a great shot, isn't it? So fast. It's turn 10, right at the bunk we've been making reference to all weekend and a big slide there for Tander out of turn 11 and also one of the Nissans that was Rick Kelly a little bit wide in fact Russell Ingle that curb cam shot that we were looking at a moment ago between turns 10 and 11 that's about 210 kilometers an hour the speed of the cars across the camera
This is looking rearward from James Courtney's car. That's Fabian Coulthard in the Lockwood entry. Briefly in top gear, you can see that the brake approach to turn five is a gentle right hand turn on the approach. Makes it quite tricky and Van Gisbergen went straight ahead down there. Here he is. He was sixth. He's got to try and find the right spot to drop back in without making a gain. Quite awkward for the drivers and for the officials for that matter to manage that problem when you do make a mistake and go ahead down there. Well, he slotted back in sixth position behind Will Davison ahead of McLaughlin and Prema. Back on board we go with Courtney. Here's what happened to Shane. So he's got the inside front locked and ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, whenever you get onto the grass there at that high speed approach, that's a high risk. But he released the brake better to do that than put a big uh, flat spot on that tyre. And he just uh, ran straight ahead. And Neil, I know we share this view. We should make the point that going out of six spot and then redressing and coming back in in six spot is in fact the game. Because yes. you've just made a mistake, you've gone off, you should pay a penalty. And that was discussed at the driver's briefing on Friday night. Cameron McConville is the investigating officer and his view is that exactly what you just described. So he would expect you to be at least one spot further back from that. So I'd be curious to see whether or not that's something that is discussed between race control and the team. Here's Will Davison. Just keeping an eye too at the back of this little pack is David Reynolds. He was pressuring Alex Davison for a bit. And now Reynolds and, there, there they are. Reynolds and Jason Bright are having an awesome battle. They were doing that side-by-side -side stuff at turn eight. And it went on there between turns 10 and 11 in the last two corners of the racetrack. And so Bright's now got a spot on David. David's car looked awful in a couple of those shots. It was jumping wildly. Well, they had a battle, Crompo. They swapped positions twice. take much if you get offline and get yourself out of rhythm not as much grip out there and some of the bumps are pretty nasty offline gee that car was leaping around so Courtney's just proving to be very difficult at the moment for Coulthard as now John O'Webb comes down the inside of James Moffat big lock up Russell Ingle and runs wide gathers it up Rick Kelly right behind him now we saw them change positions before when Rick went off at turn 11 and he would have seen that lock up for Ingle He's saying a little sniff back, put some pressure back on Russell and see if he can get that position. It's been a quiet weekend for Jonathan Webb in the Darrell Lee entry. Got off to a great start in Adelaide. He hasn't been able to get the car to his liking here this weekend. Fastest lap of the race, Mark Winterbottom, a 1 minute 4.07. Yeah, 10th and 11th in the first two races for John O. Webb, which is a good result, but the qualifying efforts have been hard work, so he's had to fight his way through the field to get those uh, positions in the race. And right now he's moved up to 14th. And it looks a little bit like James Courtney's holding that pack up now because they've all come up in behind. You can see Courtney battling to stop there. Fabian Coulthard's been putting pressure on now, lap after lap. Davison's moved right up behind Coulthard. Van Giersbergen moved up. Prema, McLaughlin, also the two 52 cars in behind, so this has become a little freight train. Even Craig Lowndes and Garth Tander have moved onto the back of that. So this is all coming from Courtney's speed. And he's complaining of high speed oversteer in the car. So it's sliding too much in the rear in these quick corners. This is the last corner. You can see that Fabian gets a little bit closer. We'll stay with him here. We'll get an indication of the car behavior. This is Courtney. One of those Fujitsu cars was locked up in the background there and has fired straight off the road. Prema. So while we were riding with James Courtney, saw a glimpse of the red car firing straight through the turn five runoff area. Oh, loud 
Jones, a big slide there, trying to get a run on Prema. This will be interesting down here because Prema probably should let Lowndes by based on going off the road. And that was a very big moment for Craig Lowndes as he got it turned and tucked in under the wing. Tander also putting pressure on Craig. This will be a pretty healthy battle down here. Van Gisbergen, he's making a move here. So Courtney's found himself with his ears boxed back at turn four. Coulthard's gone by, so is the FPR car, and now Van Giz is up the inside. James is going to argue the point at five and try and hold his line here for six, and he has. Well so. done, but the crisscross. So he did that, he fired down the inside at turn six, and he's run oh. Van Gisbergen out of road. He definitely come over there on the braking approach. This will be a safety car if he can't move it. No. He's gone in a cloud of dust. James Courtney fought his way through five and six. And then seven and eight decided to just drift across and squeeze Shane Van Gisbergen. And as a result, Courtney's stay is in the dust. So the second safety car intervention now. Here's the situation back at turn four. This is what triggered it all. Fabian got up the inside with a little bump there at four. That put James out of rhythm. Will Davison goes by, so now James' exit speed is slow. Makes him slow down the straight, so Shane Van Gisbergen gets a run at him. But James now, as he gathers pace again, was able to hang on here at turn five. Goes the long way round, gives him the, the ideal apex for six. You'll see glimpses of Shane. So they're side by side. what it looks, sounds and feels like. So he ended up across the nose. Here it is from outside, tells the story. As James moved left, there's nowhere for Van Gisbergen to go, so it pivots around the nose of the VIP Pet Foods entry and in the kitty litter. And this is what happened to Alex Prima. That was a very big brake lock up. He almost KO'd his teammate. Ooh. That was close to a very big pile of Fujitsu components on the road there. Not wrong. Scott McLaughlin did a very, very good job not to get hit. Back with more in a second. Stay with us. So the safety crew's activated down there at turn eight to remove James Courtney. This is not very good for the Anzac spirit now. No, Anzac spirit. it's not good for the Anzac spirit. A little bit of aggravation Australian, between the two Australian countries. New Zealand. That's right. So James will be pretty dirty that he's ended up in a situation where well, he had a pretty competitive car and he's in the in the gravel down there. That was Tony Dow in the foreground. Yes, we forget. April the 25th, Anzac Day and the Holden Racing Team saluting the great spirit between our two nations. And that's Rob Starr to the left of Tony Dow. Tony was the team manager for TWR, Tom Walkinshaw Racing's sports car operations in North America for many years. They ran at Le Mans and they ran successfully in the States. He also ran the Ligier Formula One operation for Walkinshaw at one stage and then he was involved with the Panos sports car program. Meantime down in the bunker at Techno Autosports, that's Bruce Jenkins who's also got a European Formula One pedigree in his motor racing background. So. Looks like he's busy on the local area network on the land. They're firing messages backwards and forwards as all the teams offer their viewpoint to race control about what should or should not happen, who should be hung and who shouldn't be. So we're reaching a point with the amount of traffic there. Sometimes between the teams, they need full-time typists in there. So hard for these guys to get into the groove. The leading Kiwi in the field is Fabian Coulthard. Van Gisbergen is fifth. Scotty McLaughlin behind him. And Johnny Reid in 20 seconds.
Looking down over this circuit here as we get ready for a restart with uh, car 22 out of the Stones down at turn eight. Uh, Barretts? Oh, Bruce, you need a secretary down here. You've got a lot going on. What's your take on what you just saw with James Courtney and Shane? I just don't think James gave him enough racing room as he came back onto the circuit. And unfortunately, that was the end result. One of them, one of them went. It's a great shame. We're having a great race and we'll keep going from there. Right. Thanks, Bruce. Cheers. Might try and just grab a quick word. Sorry to interrupt you there, Tony. You're very busy. We're just keen to get a view on... Uh, uh, we've got the other side's view of that incident. You got a view? Uh, no, we're working on it, OK? Sorry. OK, well, there's a view. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Thanks for that, Tony. Let's head down and ready to go again, isn't it? So, uh, again, winner bottom leads them through for this restart. Van Gisbergen's still out there. He's in fifth. James Courtney's at the back of the queue. A little bit better job from Wink Cup that time. Winner bottom got a very good jump out of the hairpin on the previous restart. But Jamie Wink Cup went with him. Fabian Coulthard could restart also. Then quite a big gap there between Davison and Van Gisbergen. This time they all snake through in single file and no aggro. Incidentally, Courtney has continued. It's just a couple of laps down on the leaders, so they've dragged him out, cleaned him up, and off he's gone. Oh, straight ahead goes Russell Ingle at turn five. Ingle Russell was, was 15th. At that that's point. right, he was with Rick Kelly. So oh, come it's out on there. again, it's on again, and this time Wing Cup Big squeezes through debris on the track. And Fabian Coulthard is going to round them all up. Wow. While you box and punch and dice, Coulthard goes around and says, I'll take the lead, and the crowd will love it. <laughs> How was the New Zealand reaction? It's not over yet between Wing Cup and Winterbottom. Look how close they are. And Frosty will be fuming. Winterbottom will be fuming here. So he'll be doing everything he can to respond. Van Gisbergen looked up the inside of Will Davison then as well at four. And this is a copy of yesterday. This is about the proximity of the two. With a big dive yesterday from Winterbottom on Wing Cup. That was a lunge, a massive lunge from Wing Cup that time. Into the hairpin, down the inside, McLaughlin. On Van Giersbergen, these guys, this is not over. He'll want to return serve this time. Frosty will want to be close enough to get down the inside here. He's not close enough. Winkup turns it in slightly early. Tanda on Prema, who I would imagine has got a massive flat spot on a tyre. And Jason Bright's getting some hurry up from Dave Reynolds there as well on the exit of eight. Look at the gap. Yeah, well nice. done, Fabian. He's got away very nicely. Alex Davison, Jason Bright side to side. Reynolds up the inside, Jonathan Webb tucked in behind in the queue. This has got all the potential to be messy. Well, somehow they all found their own piece of the road, but we know that two into one doesn't go particularly well down at one, and Alex Davison's lost a bunch of spots in the course of the last four turns. And you see Alex having to tippy toe on the dirty line down there. Look at the margin that Coulthard's got over Wind Cup. And Winterbottom will have missile lock on the back of that Red Bull Commodore at the moment. He will be absolutely focused on trying to get that spot back. As I said at the start of the race, he'll be cranky. He had a bad day yesterday at the office when he tried to pull the move for the race lead. It didn't work out. He got into an intra-team brawl this morning in qualifying. And now he's also got his teammate breathing on him here at the hairpin. Here it is again in replay. This is what happened. And opportunistic move by Jamie Wincup, but it slowed him up so much that it was a free gift for Fabian Coulthard. Oh. That was barely a gap because it started with a push. So again, and this is going to be a very tricky one for them to deal with upstairs. Van Gisbergen gets around Will Davison. So that puts a Kiwi first oh. and a Kiwi third. Big oversteer moment for Will Davison through two there. Lowndes is right in the middle of all that scrap as well. So Frosty's having a struggle here, isn't yeah. he? Steering dramas. He's reporting steering drama 
He's drifting back and they're all going to pick oh, him off one by one. Good. Look at this. So oh, Scott McLaughlin. Okay, mate. Okay. Come in. Hit McLaughlin off the road at six. Tander up the inside of Prema. Alex Prema's holding on with a very badly damaged front tyre. Winterbottom's gone. He is gone. He's on the left-hand side of your screen, he'll keep going into pit lane. Well, they're big repercussions. That was a pretty controversial move. He and Winkup battling for the lead. The contact between those two cars will have created the steering issue. And he's complaining now of those steering dramas. And you can see him go backwards, losing two spots now into turn one. This is a replay of this big moment that Will Davison has. Frosty outside, Weiss also. And Will's got that spot back on Shane Van Gisberg and Brett. Guys, Frosty just back into uh, the pits at the moment. He, he has a problem with the front steering. They can't work out exactly what it is, but it is from uh, that knocking around with Jamie Wincup. So uh, not very happy at FPR at the moment. Okay, the wheel back on. I'm sure there's some drama down there because, you know, he was leading. We saw the issues yesterday with that bold move that Frosty put on. Excuse me, Matt. So did you see the steering wheel? Yeah. The steering wheel was substantially off-centre then. So uh, there'll be a bent steering arm there, and that's very disconcerting for the driver. You can see Frosty just giving it a wiggle there to try and test its reactions and behaviour. So he's already gone a lap down. You heard them say, Chris O'Toole, the crew chief, send it, get a feel for it, and we'll bring it in next lap if we have to. But I caught a glimpse as he exited the pit box and the steering wheel was massively off centre. But it just builds the moment, doesn't it? The aggro that we saw last year with Triple Eight and FPR. We saw the aggro yesterday at the end of the race. We've seen aggro at the start of this race. And there was a bump and a shove and a push, and now steering issues have basically put Mark Winterbottom out of this one. Here's Chris O'Toole. And then run out of steering. James Small, the engineer. So that Tooley then saying, bring him in, would be my read. That On that, here comes Jason Bright now. He's on the attack with Alex Premier. Going to have to do it the long way around. And out there, high and wide is awkward. It's dirty, it's bumpy. David Reynolds set to pounce. This is a battle for seventh at the moment. Well, Bright and Reynolds have been trading blows lap after lap, and now Alex Premer is in the picture. And don't worry, Jonathan Webb's in this one too. And you've got to pick your mark. Do you notice that Jason Bright decided to get out of the throttle and pull back in behind Premer? Premer was already shifting him wide. He didn't have enough racing room. And we know that Alex is pretty wild. And Jason Bright just decided just to move back in behind. That's probably a pretty smart move based on the Jason Richards. Alex Davison on the inside of Jonathan Webb, the run to five. He's well up there. But if you hold your ground, you can hold that apex at six, and that is precisely what Webb has just done. That was good racing. Off by the five. road, Jamie Wincup. Wincup is off and buried. That, Championship leader in the dirt. He was okay, second when that happened. Boards and flag, safety car, boards and flag, safety car, just hold, safety car, hold. Uh, we have another car off. Uh, that is unbelievable. The the gravel, safe place, just hold. So exactly the same place as Jamie Wing, uh, as James Courtney. Wing Cup goes in here at turn eight. By himself. Done it all himself. Onto the grass. There'll be a reason for it. On the left-hand side, there's nothing he can do. So let's have a listen. It's like it just overrun. It didn't, it didn't retard hardly at all at the start. Maybe it had some throttle still on it. That was very strange. Well, sorry, I just don't want to interrupt when he's talking. Talk, sorry, sorry, Dutto, to interrupt. Mark Dutton, Jamie's engineer, mate. Uh, we couldn't get a read on what went wrong there. What, uh, mechanical drama? No, just foot slipped off the pedal. As simple uh, as that. Oh, really? Yeah, obviously, uh, there's no room for that. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that happens. Thanks. Bunch of heads up. While we're here, I just want to quickly grab a 
a quick chat with Roland Dane, uh, team principal down here at Red Bull Racing. Mate, as the unofficial uh, <laughs> Holden team here this weekend, uh, that was disappointing, but I, I wanted to talk to you about the incident early in the race because cars one and five under investigation. You'll read on that. Uh, yeah, um, I think we're here as the official team, actually. But anyway, um, I thought it was uh, Jamie taking the race to, to win the bottom. He braked early into the hairpin by the look of it externally. And uh, Jamie decided to give him a lunge. Uh, Winterbottom proved he's pretty good at lunging at Sandown last year and yesterday here. So uh, what goes around comes around. There's no question, Roland. This format is certainly bringing this out of the drivers. We've seen a little bit of agitation this weekend. I think it's actually a good thing. Uh, short races, uh, short, sharp races, to be honest, with, uh, with plenty of action. We're certainly laying it on for, for the Kiwis this weekend. And we just heard your man, his foot slipped off the pedal. We've all been there and all done it. Can happen. Very, very unlucky. Yeah, apparently. that's. Uh, I only heard the same as you but uh, if so that uh, yeah we need to do a little bit of engineering on his foot <laughs> all right thanks for the heads up buddy. Yes. well tim edwards mark winterbottom has just come into the garage here we've just heard from roland dane that he thought that was all roland thought that was all in uh, racing and what was happening out on the track and the pair, the pair have been dishing it up to each other all year your response to that what a load of rubbish. I mean, that was just bump and run. We don't tolerate that in this sport. He knows that. So it's great when, you know, he's on the receiving end that he has a different view. But anyway, that's, uh, that's racing. I think we just saw Karma out there, didn't we? Thanks, Tim. And this is the incident that they're referring to. This was Wink Up down the inside of Winterbottom. We saw the aggro yesterday. And then the vision that we've seen is the series leader, not the series leader now, but the man who has been dominant in this sport, the simplest mistake, foot coming off the pedal, you've done it. I did it here uh, when we were here in 2002. There was no turn five, six, seven then, so you arrived at the end of the back straight at 270 k's. The size 10 got it wrong and fell between the pedals. Had eyes like dish plates by the time I got down <laughs> the dirt there. It's not a good look, I think you did it too. I've done it too, I'm qualifying at Eastern Creek. <laughs> and I think that Larko's done it too. It's, it just happens, doesn't it? Yeah. A lot of brake pressure required down there, so there's some damage on this car. They'll need to have a look at it. It will have ingested a lot of garbage into the front of it. It would make huge engine and brake temps if they don't. So a rare mistake by Jamie Wincup. And I'd be interested to get a view from officials later in the day as to what they thought of what happened there at turn 8. So they're, right front wheel there. so they're going to so have a good look under it. Skate for you Blanky. mentioned that Jamie Wincup is now no longer the series leader. That has gone to Will Davison. Okay. Currently in second, so Fabian Coulthard leads the race. Then Will, then Shane Van Gisbergen. As Frosty heads back out. Great damn close. Thank you. Down. Good to go. It's handy that they go back out together. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be keeping an eye on the front of the field and the back of the field. How was your day, mate? Oh, not bad. <laughs> Good to no, see you again. I don't think it'll be that. Something of that effect, anyway. <laughs> so Will Davis, not only leading the championship right now, he's leading the Jason Richards <laughs> Memorial. Yeah, combined point score over the course of the four races. Will had a seventh and a second yesterday, and he's on track for another podium here. So off they go. This will be a time-certain race. It won't go the distance. There are ten laps left. Basically another seven minutes of racing plus well, six and a half minutes of racing. There you go, and one lap. Let's see what this restart brings. Coulthard heads out. He started on pole position yesterday for our seventh race and was penalised for a false start. Now he's got the chance to make amends. Davison's behind him. Only once has a Ford won at this circuit in the V8 supercar era. And two extremely different lines through turns five and six between the Holden and the Ford of Coulthard and Davison and Van Gisbergen's ready to pounce. Wow, did you see Will's car? He's Whoa. had a dive. Will up the inside at eight. And Will was cranked sideways on the run in there and he's got away with it. Now Van Gisbergen's into it as well. Kiwis side by side. And Shane Van Gisbergen grabs P2. Lowndes is looking racy too at the rear of car 14. But here comes Will. Very good move, Will Davison. That was a very good pass. Thief in the night stuff. Ford fans are loving that. 
He might have caught Fabian napping for a split second. It's all it takes around here. With five minutes to go, race time. Yeah, we finish at five minutes to the hour, plus a lap and off the road and out of control there for a moment. Scott McLaughlin gathered it up. That was a good save. He was off the road going very fast. Now on board with Will Davison, and that's Shane Van Giersbergen in behind. Fabian caught that right up in behind his fellow Kiwi. And a pretty lively bunch in behind there with Craig Lowndes, Tander, Bright, Reynolds. We're getting value for money this weekend, don't we? Oh, nice. Great, There's some it? stuff going on out there. Look at this. Look at this. Nose, Nose to, to tail. tail. <laughs> what do you think, B1? <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> you do, B2. Check this out. Through turn 10. Oh, Van Gisbergen sliding in through turn 11. He was sliding that car so much. You wonder how he can keep on doing that and get away with it, Van Gisbergen. Car 97. It's allowed Coulthard to get very close again to the back of him. heard a groan on the radio oh, oh I heard a groan on the radio from this man and they've asked him if he's okay this is McLaughlin well this would be really nasty that was hard. I don't know I... that is a biggie it's very very fast it's a 200k corner we heard Richard Holway say Are you okay mate it was just a grunt yeah, I heard he, I, yeah. he he opened the microphone and went, ugh, and here he is, he's okay, but that will have winded him. Those six-point belts give you a big winding, and that's what he's indicating to us there at the moment. And on the exit of turn 11, huge speed, 200-odd kilometres an hour into that concrete wall, and it's knocked the young guy around. This is Scott McLaughlin, winner of race six yesterday. He's unplugged now, safety car out for the third time. You can see where he's fired off the road. That would have started much earlier. We'll have a look at the replay here, and this will tell us the story. Uh, he'll get a warm response from the crowd. This is the one that we remarked about a few moments ago, so remember now, dirty tyres. A lot Ooh. of garbage in the front of the car. Would have scooped up some rubbish into the brake intakes, and then it runs out of road here. He's actually off the road quite early. possibly punctured a tyre before he got there or maybe the tyres were dirty whatever the case, he's ended up in the wall fortunately he's out of the car and he's been a bit winded and okay, there's his crew led by Richard Holway. Yeah, right here with Richard um, Richard just saw that moment for Scott, he is okay? Yeah, no, he sounds like he's a bit winded he's hit pretty hard I'd say Mechanical problem, was it yeah, possible no puncture? Front, left front uh, tyre failure, yeah Thanks mate, yep, no worries. there you go so the left front went on Scott going into turn 10 and uh, it's a big deep breath that he needs to take before he heads wow. back what a weekend matt yesterday you win the first race of your supercar career and today you crash at one of the highest speed wildest places anywhere we go yeah and you saw that in car vision i think it was from uh, inside lounges or wing cups car you see the wings on their seat that's what those wings are about when you have that sideways impact like that they stop your head going sideways and they're hard ones because when you have a frontal or three-quarter impact like you saw with scotty pie uh, last week in tasmania the car can deform when the whole car side of a car hits a wall like that a lot of energy goes into the driver so he'll well and truly have the wind knocked out of him yeah he's got hold of his ribs like uh, not surprisingly he'll head back to the medical tent and be checked out so we are facing the situation here of this race being declared under safety car this is time certain finishes at five minutes to the hour local time plus a lap and uh, you don't know they may be able to get it uh, up on the flatbed truck and removed in time for us to get at least one clean lap if it stays as it is, we get another forward win, Matt. You've been alluding to that this weekend, and a big one for Will Davison, who's all of a sudden looking good in the points. And I would say that most of the team managers would be saying, let it finish under the safety car. The amount of lunacy that we've just seen. Yep. This, stop, stop. You're stop. only going to get one lap. Just stop. 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 We talked about this. Uh... We're sick of writing checks. <laughs> right. Stop. Yeah, enough's enough, guys, hey? That's the, uh, that's the vibe, isn't it? We've still got one race to go, remember. They've already done the qualifying session for that. 
Earlier today, Crompo, you said this has got a sniff of chaos about it. You did. You can feel it in your water, couldn't you? Okay. You can just tell. <laughs> it's tragic, really, because it means they've been coming in the front gate too long. <laughs> That's a real shame for Scotty McLaughlin. Like you say, Mark, he's ridden the highs and lows of this game in just one weekend. It's a big equaliser, isn't it? It's a hard game. It just goes to show what a knife edge the boys are on. It's a very fine line between being a hero and not in professional motor racing at this level. Very disappointing, but it's all part of a bank of information that he'll be continuing to gather to keep on building himself towards being a championship contender. We know he's got speed. He's put that first major win on the board yesterday. And we might have a situation here where the Pedders STP safety car can be released and we get a flying finish. But all good news for Will Davison. Great run for the Kiwis again. Van Gisbergen and Coulthard flying the local flag brilliantly this weekend. Well, two locals on the podium to start this uh, Sunday of racing. So the car's been removed from the circuit, car 33. And I reckon they're going to have one flying lap. This will be the final lap. We have clicked past the critical five minutes to the hour. So we're into the five minutes to the hour plus the lap. And we think that the uh, checkered flag will come out. So what will happen is the Chrysler Petters STP safety car will pull off. They'll see a green flag. They'll roll to the line. The checkered flag will be out. They'll be done. So there won't be any lunacy. Well. <laughs> well. Well. Hang on. That was just, let's that just was get bold. to the end first. Yeah. Okay. So the safety car is now getting out of the way. And Will Davison, all things being equal, should just lead a rolling finish and become the first Ford driver to win at this circuit in nine years and only the second Blue Oval boy to claim a victory here behind Marcus Ambrose. And not only that, Will will lead the championship. Green flags, green flags. Uh-oh. So this is a run to the flag. Stay on the black stuff. And you get your first win of the season and Will Davison becomes our seventh different race winner for 2013. And ends a long, long drought for Ford at Pukekohe Park Raceway. The Kiwis are Van Gisbergen and Coulthard. He still wanted to have a crack, Will. And it's thumbs up for Shane Van Gisbergen next to him. So the Giz second, Coulthard in third, and Craig Lowndes in fourth. It's another winner. It's You're quite a roll race. call at the moment, isn't, isn't it? it? I'm yeah. right. Seriously, on the piece of paper that I've got, <laughs> there isn't room at the bottom. I'm happy to start <laughs> another piece of paper. It's fantastic. So there's your podium. Garth Tander finishing in fifth. Bright and David Reynolds were battling the whole way through, and that's how they remained at the end. Jason Bright will start our next race from pole position. Rick Kelly inside the top ten yet again for the Nissan Altima, and the Nissan Motorsport guys have dual back-to-back uh, -back top ten finishes. So things are pointing in the right direction. A real lift for that team. Tim Slade for Erebus Motorsport just missing out on a top 15 position. The casualties, there were plenty. It has cost Jamie Wincup the lead of the championship. Mark Winterbottom and Wincup tangling. The feud between Triple Eight and FPR is growing by the minute. There's a lot of feeling there at the moment between those organisations. There has been. Remember, they were the only two teams to share success in the 2012 championship. We've blown that away in the new season with these new cars. They've had a couple of battles, one with each other, and now with a greater number of teams. So seven different winners and a great job for Ford. Will Davison, very happy. 
<laughs> look at the guys. I, I love the way the guys get into it in terms of the elation, the team performance in this early part of the year has been incredible. Their workload to get these new cars on track. Everybody in pit lane has contributed so much. And this is a great reward for all their work. <laughs> it's sort of a kiss, but... He went on the streets of Sydney last year to finish off 2012. And he now has a 25-point lead in the championship. And remember the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy for the combined points over the weekend. He also leads that Will Davison by 12 points. Equals second, Jason Bright and Shane Van Gisbergen. Well, Will Davison, just uh, enjoying this moment. You can tell it's special. I've got some more special news for you. You are now the leader in the championship by 25 points <laughs> and also the leader in the Jason Richards Trophy. Congratulations, mate. Great day. Yeah, we're just uh, playing it smart and playing it cool this weekend, uh, Barrett. So that was, you know, we've got a tough race ahead of me in the next one off ninth, but uh, I'm pumped to get a win and uh, very excited for the team. Very excited for all the Ford fans. You know, it's been a couple of rounds since we've got on top. Frosty has had such a fast car, so I actually feel really bad for him. He's He's been... Uh, <laughs> he's been the man to catch in our team this weekend, but he's got another one to go on the next one. And, um, you know, let's hope we can finish on a good note. I'm just trying to be, trying to be smart and cool about this year and uh, let a few others make some mistakes around me. So, um, you know, this is, this is for all the Ford fans. This is for all our sponsors of Pepsi Max, their first victory. And, uh, of course, to everyone special at home. Thank you. Good on you, Will. Congratulations. All right, Shane Van Gisberg, and welcome back to the podium here in Auckland. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's a pretty cool race. A lot of action going on, but uh, had an incident with James. He, he expected me not to be there, I think, and spun himself out. But stoked two Kiwis on the podium. That's awesome. I hope you all enjoyed that race and another one to come this hour. Good on you, Shane. Enjoy the podium. Congratulations. And Fabian Coulthard, for you and the team, this is shaping up as a great weekend. Yeah, look, it's not too bad. You know, we're unlucky there. I thought I had a bit of a flat tyre through one. It was pretty wild, and, you know, obviously Will was on top of his game and, you know, got me into the happen. But look, you know, to be standing on the podium, um, it's not all bad. It's not a bad day. So, like, it's like Shane said, it's awesome to have two Kiwis on the, on the podium. Thanks for everybody coming out. Um, you know, we try and put on the best show we can, and it's good fun. Been a great show today, Fabian. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. I reckon we've walked into the garage at exactly the right time here, mate. Um, I see you looking at the bottom of your boot, Jamie. Uh, is that right? Your foot's come off the pedal. Yeah, it just slipped off the pedal, breaking into the hairpin. Um, and you know what happens when, when that happens? You get a he heap of throttle as well at the same time. So, good Alpine Star product, but I think I'm trying to get uh, a few too many race meetings out of, the, out of my favourite pair, so I'll put a new set on for next, next race. Yeah, and I think we've got to put it in perspective for people at home. You know, every time you put your foot on the pedal, it's like the equivalent of like a leg press of your own weight, yeah. uh, and you've got to be down to the hundredth of a second, and quite clearly, as we saw, you were looking for those hundredths. <laughs> Great fight out there with Frosty. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Um, he, he wants to do it rough this year, so... Uh... That's the way we're playing it at this stage. So, no, good battle. The car was reasonably quick. Um, yeah, unfortunate that uh, foot slipped off the pedal, but anyway. Second in the championship. But the great thing about these, about these formats, mate, apart from the fact that it's crazy out there, yeah. and we're loving it, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is, no, but you, you get now to go and start on the front row again. And that's where this really works. We're seeing a bigger variety of grid positions this weekend, I think, than we've ever seen. Yeah, I think you're right. It's a good thing, you know, if you're, um, you know, if we were starting where we finished, that weekend would be written off. But at least we're another chance of, of getting back up there and a uh, whole, new, whole new scenario next race, so uh, watch this space. Alright, thanks buddy, good luck in the next one. Cheers. So Jay Dub in search of a new set of boots, he's getting too much use out of them. So Will Davison went into that race 34 points behind his good mate. Now Will leads the championship and becomes the first Ford driver of 2013 to stand on the top step of the podium. This will be a popular one too. Two Kiwis are up there in Shane Van Gisbergen and Fabian Coulthard. Barretts. Race 8 of the year, the 2013 V8 Supercars ITM 400 Auckland. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please congratulate our winners in first place for Pepsi Max Crew FPR Ford, Will Davison. In second place for Techno Team VIP, Shane Van Gisbergen. And in third place for Lockwood Racing, Fabian Coulthard. Representing our winning team, Pepsi Max Crew FPR Ford, is Richard Jacobs. To make the presentation of the third place trophy is Dylan Boucher, the New Zealand Breakers player, three-time NBL basketball champions. Presenting to second place is Mike Clark, the Chief Information Officer, Sky City Entertainment Group. 
making the presentation to our winning team is Philip Wolfe, the ITM store owner from our major sponsor, ITM. And presenting the first place trophy is Morris Cowling, another ITM store owner from our major sponsor, ITM. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 ITM 400 Auckland Race 8 winners. Will Davison finished fourth in the championship of 2012. He won eight races last year and he's on the board this year with his 15th career victory. The Ford flag is finally flying.